Hi, I'm Michelle Kelly, editor of Cottage Life magazine. I'm delighted to welcome you to the first episode of season two of the Cottage Life podcast. In this episode, we'll catch up with star of HGTV and real estate pro Scott McGilvery about his tips for buying a cottage. He'll talk you through what to look for and what to avoid. Plus, we reflect on the simple pleasure of being absolutely and beautifully alone at the lake and must have information for any cottage dog owner. What to do when Fido meets skunk in the woods and skunk wins. This is the Cottage Life Podcast, where every day is the weekend. Hey, Cottage Coach Adam Holman here. We don't get many summer weekends in Canada, so we need to embrace every single one of them. That means my family and I get outside no matter what. Whether the sky is grey, or the wind off the lake is chilly, or even when the mosquitoes are biting. But before we head outside, we need a reliable bug repellent. That's where Off Family Care comes in. It's deep free and easy to apply, and it repels mosquitoes for up to five hours. Plus, its new formula dries on contact, so it doesn't feel oily or greasy. Try it, and you'll have one more great reason to embrace the outdoors every summer weekend. At the 2020 Virtual Cottage Life and Outdoor Living Show last March, I had the pleasure of catching up with Scott McGilvery. He's the longtime star of several of HGTV's most popular shows, including Income Property, Scott's House Call, and, most recently, Scott's Vacation House Rules. Over the years, Scott has purchased and sold hundreds of properties across North America, including many cottages. A passionate cottager himself, Scott revealed his list of things to look for when buying a cottage, as well as his advice on what to avoid at all costs. I'll, I'll give you my top 10. This is okay. it. The yes. top 10 absolute must consider things yes. when buying a cottage. Okay. Hit us Some up. of them are obvious. Like the first one is price, yes. right? You've got you to be realistic about your price. Pick your price and really try to stick to it. The problem is people say, oh, a million dollars is my range. So then they tell the agents, I'm looking for a million dollar cottage. And then you start seeing $1.2 million cottages. And mm-hmm. you're like, well, we'll just go up to 1.2. It's a slippery slope, if you will. And all of a sudden, your vacations are pretty thin. Like you're yeah. going up to the cottage and you're you're eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Right. And you can't even afford a paddleboard. So yeah. you need to balance you know, your budget with the things, how you want your experience to be. So number one is price. Number two, which kind of goes with this, is how much uh, how much of an investment is required to turn it into a up to date, clean version of what a, a vacation uh, would look like for you. Like, what are the renovation costs associated with it? But also, what are the opportunities at this time? Like, maybe if you're going to spend a million dollars, you might want to consider renting it out for half the summer when you're not there anyway in order to be able to afford it. And to be clear, you don't have to spend a million dollars to get a rental property. That's that's not- No, you don't necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. But um, let's talk about number three. Location is super important. Um, And for me, uh, to be honest, I- I, I, there, I was looking at three or four different locations. I'm like, I kind of like this area. I kind of like this area. But the deal breaker on location was under two hour drive. Right. Right. It's like location is not only where is it, but how long does it take to get there? Yeah. yeah. So get in the car, drive there, drive back, try it on a long weekend because yes. it changes. Yes, it does. Um, well, and, to, and a note there too, that it depends where you live, obviously. If you live in Toronto, it's, 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 it tends to be that prices are more expensive the closer you get to Toronto, is the truth. For the most part, there is definitely, it's not a perfect circle though. I tell people, it's a bit, of, a bit like an octopus, the way mm. that the market is inflated around uh, urban centers. And you know, you kind of go up the 400 and it's a long arm of unaffordability. <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of go up towards the core of the lakes on us. It's like a starfish a little bit. Yes. But there's these pockets in between that are actually very uh, reasonable. 
And that's where I think some of the best opportunities are, is if you are looking in these sort of off the beaten path, not so, um, not so traditional areas mm -hmm. where there's great opportunities. All right, let's talk about number four. Number four on my list is, is the, the lot itself, like what lake or what type of recreational property do you have? Is it a farm? Is it a vineyard? Is yeah. it a lakefront property? You have to decide um, what, like what's the draw to the lot. Typically it's body of what being on water or yes. water access in some capacity. And you have to decide what type of water typically you want to be near or on. Like, do you want, are you okay to be on a pond? Are you okay to be on a non-motorized vehicle body of water? Mm -hmm. A um, river maybe, a lot of people look at rivers. River, are you okay to be on a river? Exactly, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. tr totally. It, um, and then, you know, how big does the lake have to be? Are you gonna be water skiing? Mm -hmm. Because you need a certain size to get out and start doing water skiing. Are you the type of per are you a boating person like do you want to go into town to get ice cream and to be able to go shopping mm -hmm. is it a chain of lakes is fishing important to you mm -hmm. um and or you know do you want to go extreme is big water like a great lake right or like simcoe for instance or, yeah. important to you because yeah. those those are all very different types of bodies of water you're and, right there okay um, number five number five is um, the elevation of the lot yeah, is this important is too. One. Like what type of land do you want? Do you want to be on top of a hill looking, you know, way across like with a beautiful view, mm -hmm. but you're a hundred steps down to the lake? Because mm -hmm. that, I'll tell you right now, that was a big deterrent for me. When we were younger, we had a cottage and it was a hundred steps to the lake. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, when like, my grandparents came up, they never came down to the lake. No, no, that, well, this is a huge thing right now too, because a lot of people are looking forward to uh, retirement at the cottage. Yeah. And what seems totally fine when you're 45 might not be fine when you're 75 or 80, you know? So you need to be careful uh, about that. And I think you said to me too, very key thing, you do not want to get down to the dock and realize you forgot your beer in the cottage and you have to go all the it's, way back If up. you get down to the lake and you're like, oh, it's I know so it's annoying. <laughs> Just ruin it for me. This is the absolute definition of a first world problem. Let's be clear, but it is. <laughs> if you're okay. going to spend the money, you better do it right. Well, we can all dream and aspire. So <laughs> um, to me, that's important. Like, what is yeah. your shoreline like? Do you care if it's a rocky entry or do you need a beach? Yeah. Right? All those types of things. What What is the, the lot like? And that kind of leads me to my next point, which I guess is number six. Here, number six, yes. Which is your perspective. People don't think about this. Right. Perspective is a game changer. Yes. Without even looking at the property, I look at where it's sitting on the, on the map. I'm like, mm, it's facing northeast. Don't even want to see it. So my perspective is south to northwest. Anything in that kind of like, I don't know what I want to say, three, you know, the degrees yep. is somewhere between uh, 200 and 310 degrees mm -hmm. on the compass, somewhere mm -hmm. in that range. And there's apps you can use. So if it's a cloudy day when you're looking at it or it's the winter, you can check what it's like in June. But kind of like June, July, August, you'd like the afternoon sun. Yes, yes. I don't need to see the sunset. Like it would be nice if I had long days. I'd rather mm -hmm. have long days than early days at the cottage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't need the sun rise because it is early in June. Yes. Like at 6 a.m., I'm lying in bed and I can feel the sun hitting my <laughs> eyes. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> what, what am I looking at here? I'm blind. For yeah. Some so especially if you've had a late sun. night on the campfire the night before it's just not no it's just like oh no so for <laughs> me i mean southwest is the best we all know that mm -hmm. but you can you're okay from south to kind of northwest as well because you get the afternoon sun and the and the midday sun all the way you get the long long days yeah yeah right huge, big and thing. it is it is kind of romantic like, you know, like looking at that sun, watching that sunset it just it's a great way to end the day absolutely 100% Okay, number seven. Number seven is an important one for me. I call it the jump off the dock factor. Like <laughs> the the kind of peak experience at the cottage is mm -hmm. running and jumping off the dock Friday night when you get there. Totally agree. Like 
all every problem you have melts away when you can run and jump off the dock, right? Yes. Unless it it's Georgia fun. Bay in June, but yes. <laughs> Yes, I agree. So, no, of course. To me, I'm like, I need six feet of water or more at the end of the dock. And the, I, the dock has to, you know, can't be, it doesn't, 50 feet is kind of as far as I want it to go to get yeah. to that depth. Yeah. I don't want a hundred foot dock. And, no. And I don't Well, you may not even be allowed to have a, a, you know, there might be restrictions on your dock on, depending yeah, on. Yeah. Most, most like it's about 60 feet is usually the restriction. Yeah, so I was going to I was going to add to this that your the two things that you just said, the perspective of, of you know, which where you're situated and this this bit about the lake. And I expect we'll probably talk more about the lake in a second. I always say to people, like, do not compromise on that if that's really what you want, because it cannot be changed. Like you, you, can't. you cannot change where the sun rises and sets. It's it's not happening. So if you're if you've got all of the things, if you've got that, that's your big thing, but the cottage is kind of a wreck, well, maybe you buy it and fix it up and you'll still have the nice sunset to look at at the end of a long day of work. So I think that's really important to note as well. These are these are kind of deal breakers, yes, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. And even that goes with the depth of the lake itself. Like I I kind of want a lake that's got some depth. Yeah. There's a lot of people that go looking at cottages, and I've heard of this nightmare before. They go looking in April and May or even earlier, yeah, March, right there's now. ice on the lake and they just assume, oh, well, I'm on the lake, this is great. And then come June, it's all weeds. Yeah, yeah, we always say that you should be sure if you're buying in the winter, ask for photos of what it looks like in the other seasons. Always, mm -hmm. always, always mm -hmm. check the depth. I need to know the depth. The first yeah. thing I do is I'm like, how deep is it 20 feet offshore? Yeah, 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 <laughs> I need to know. yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Okay, number eight. Um, so number eight, I'm kind of looking at what, what's on site. So, uh, but there's typically four different types of structures I'm looking at. So I'm looking at the cottage, okay. um, the main cottage. I'm looking at a garage. If there's a detached garage, right. I'm looking at the opportunity for a bunkie or an outbuilding, right. and that might be the garage with a bunkie above it. Right. And the last thing is a boathouse. A boat so I kind of consider these four things. I'm like, what of these four do I have? Cause I, kind of need two out of four at least like, yeah it's nice to have a cottage with a detached garage with a one bedroom like a bunkie above it that's kind of the perfect scenario for when you have guests and stuff like that because to me half the time i'm at the cottage i just want to be with my family the other half of the time you want i'd like to around. be there with other people yeah of course right? of course yeah the the thing that i i mean this is a big one as well for me I, 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 what you just said you want you buy a cottage to spend time with friends and family no question about it i think that a lot of people buy maybe not knowing that there's setbacks from the water so they might see the property and see oh yeah there's room over there for a bunkie or for a boathouse um and uh and i plan to build that and then they go to get their permit and they they realize that no they cannot do that because they're not set back from the water or some other structure or the septic system that already exists or whatever the case is so i always tell people you know if, if that's a big thing for you you got to check into that before you buy to make sure and your agent should be able to help you with that but it, you know then or the municipal office if the agent isn't isn't for sure aware where. So yeah. anyway, great point. Yes. Okay. You're on number nine. So th to me, privacy yeah. is the amount of privacy. Like how much land do you need? Do you need an acre or two acres? Do you need a hundred feet of waterfront? Mm -hmm. um, and can you see the neighbors or is it a lot that has no trees? Um, and what is the road like? I'm always like, I like the dirt road. I don't want to be straight off the highway onto my driveway. Right. And also privacy in terms of how close am I to any amenities, like a grocery store mm -hmm. or a convenience store or a gas station. Like I just, I want to be close enough that I can get there in 10 minutes, 15 minutes if I had to, um, but not so close that I'm like right in town where there's local Yeah, traffic. you want the exact right amount of isolation for you. I know. What's the, what's yeah. the amount of isolation you yeah. need? both in the location that you're in, plus directly on your property, right? Yep, for sure. Um, one thing I would add to that privacy, another tip I give people is in if you're buying in the summer and you want to use it for four seasons, figure out what, how, what it's, how private it will be once the leaves are gone, because that can make a big difference. And in fact, the leaves are gone more of the year than they're there, really. Um, yes. if you're using it for seasons. So you might be that there's a great old tree that's blocking your neighbors, but then come um, come late fall, you can see right into your neighbor's, you know, kitchen, which is maybe not what you want. So 
Yeah. Okay, so you've got one more. I feel like I want to guess what it is. What is it? Well, I don't know if this was covered under any other ones, but what about road access versus water access? <laughs> Um, uh, okay. That's a, definitely a deal breaker. <laughs> you, want a deal road. breaker. you don't want it on an island. Uh, I don't want to be on an island. It's funny. I kind of have this, I had this as a subcategory. We skipped it, but in terms of accessibility to the lake, it's also accessibility to the property. I want to be able to drive there and I want to be able to drive there all year round. Right. Yeah. But the last thing on my list, just okay, to number be 10, specific, yes. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just what renovations are possible and what are required because right. there's time, energy, resources, money, uh, all those things that go into the renovations. So I'm usually looking for um, a footprint that works, meaning like, okay, it's got the right structure or it's the right size or it has the walkout basement that I'm looking for. Um, you know, you don't necessarily want to get into a tear down and rebuild is not the ideal scenario when you're investing so much money into a property, ideally right. you can use the existing building structure frame uh, and still get the effect of like cathedral ceilings and right, the right. types of things. When you go to the cottage, you kind of want it to be a little more majestic than right, right. a residential. You don't want to feel like a suburban home. Right. No, I totally agree. Um, now, okay. So those are great. All of that. So there's so much information in there that I think is useful. Uh, another thing I think is useful, maybe more useful even, is like, what do you run screaming from? I have a few, but I bet you have a few as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a few things that are big deal breakers for me. But I would say like red flags, like even if it has all 10 of these things, if it has this other thing, pass. Mm. Mm. That's an interesting, uh, that's an interesting question. Well, I would say that even if it had all of these things, something that make me that might make me uh, run screaming would be the wrong neighbors, to be honest. Yes. Um, I was I'm working on a an episode for Scott's vacation house rules. And these this lovely couple bought this million dollar property on the lake. And on the other side of the road is a scrap metal yard. And oh. it is obnoxiously loud all day. Like you yes. just hear crunching metal. You hear crunching metal and there's people coming and going with trucks full of junk. And every time I go there, there's garbage on the side of the road. You know what I mean? Like people have just thrown dishwashers off and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God. I will say this. I actually heard a really great anecdote from a agent in Prince Edward County just this past uh, summer. He was telling me about someone who, when the pandemic came, she was living in Toronto and she jetted off to Prince Edward County thinking, it's buying a uh, spot sight unseen because she just wanted to get out of the city, like a lot of people did at that time. So she bought the place. She thought, great, I'm working from home. This will be great. This is where I'm going to live. I can go to the city occasionally. Perfect. She gets to her new place and she finds that there is no Wi-Fi and there's nothing she can do to get Wi-Fi. And that happens. So right now, a lot of people are buying with the idea that they will work from their cottage. But if you you can have a 10 out of 10 cottage, and if there's no Wi-Fi, and you cannot work there, it's really going to be a problem. Even if it's coming in two years or three years or whatever, that's on my list of flags, just to check out if it's something that's important to you, I'd say. Yeah, it's true. It's And we bought uh, our cottage, and the Wi-Fi is OK. Like, you can't get um, high speed right now. Mm -hmm. I am like finger on the pulse ready for these satellites. Yes, we have a story about it in our next issue, actually. So you have to, everyone, you have to subscribe to the magazine so you can stay on top of that. That was part of my conversation with Scott McGilvery from the 2020 Virtual Cottage Life and Outdoor Living Show. Over the years at Cottage Life, we've been so lucky to have some of Canada's most distinguished writers reflect on life at the cottage. Among them is Paul Rush, who contributed to the magazine frequently through the 90s and the aughts. This essay, about the pleasure of being well and truly alone at the lake, was part of a special package marking the 10th anniversary of our magazine in July 1997. Solitude is read by Pedro Mendez. The wind is calm, the water is still. The sun is going down on the Moon River. The dishes are done, crumbs swept off the table, chairs straightened. Adults smoke and talk of bridge on the wide screen porch. Teenagers prepare for the dance in town. The cottage bustles, but the river is silent. 
I am a small boy, nine, planning to walk the shore by myself and catch small green frogs. I slide out the screen door, not letting it bang, for without conscious decision, I seek this time to myself. I go down the seven steps, walk the path to the water, and push through the grass, alert for frogs. As I get close to the big rock, actually a point of land that faces west down the river, I see someone sitting on the old cedar bench, smoking, alone. My mother. I walk into her tranquility with a tiny green frog and a question. What are you doing? Sitting. Just sitting? My mother sighs, realizing there are some things that small boys don't easily grasp. Sitting, Polly, just sitting, watching the sunset, being by myself, being alone. Those many years ago, I did not understand the need for being by oneself that comes over cottage people. Now I do. The experience of solitude, of being alone, for small stretches of time, is central to life at the cottage. It does not mean we are reclusive or unfriendly or distant. It's simply that we treasure those windows of peace when we pull back from frantic activity or constant companionship. When we step out of the flow and watch the rest of the world go by. Cottage moments, walking the shore, out in the canoe, chopping wood, standing on the dock in the morning mist. Cottage people alone with their lives. It's dark. Your family is gathered around the bonfire, roasting wieners, popping corn. Someone waves a burning marshmallow. There's a snatch of song, little bursts of conversation. You've been breaking a green maple branch to use as a marshmallow toaster, and as you walk back towards the fire, the scene freezes in your mind. You stop still in the night, detached, apart, removed. Watching is from a great distance, supremely alone. Then you shake like a dog emerging from the water, take those few steps from the shadows and say, hand me a marshmallow, and the moment is gone. But on nights when the bonfire is lit and the voices float over the water, you remember that small, still center that opened in your life. A time of fleeting tranquility. The perfection of being alone. Hey, Cottage Coach Adam Holman here. Some cottage memories I want to keep forever. Like the proud look on my son's face the first time he hooked a fish. Or keeping him up late so he could see all the stars that we never see back in the city. But if I could forget one thing about the cottage, it would be the swarms of mosquitoes. And that's tough to do when you're covered in itchy reminders of every second you spent in shorts. So, to make sure my family and I remember the good stuff, we never forget to use Off Family Care. It repels mosquitoes for up to five hours, and it goes on as a smooth powder instead of an oily, greasy film. So now I can remember the good stuff and forget the mosquitoes. Cottage Life is well known for offering our readers little tips and hacks that make life at the lake a little easier. In this episode of the podcast, we're sharing some advice we've been asked for many, many times over the years, and one that all cottage dog owners will want to remember. You'll probably need it sooner or later. That's right. I'm talking about dog versus skunk. It's a fight most cottage pooches will find, and we all know who loses. You, when you have to ride back to the city with a stinky pooch in the car. Next time you're faced with this pressing problem, ditch the tomato juice, which just gives your dog a different bad smell, and use our Surefire Stink Removal Tip instead. First, flush your fur baby's eyes with saline solution or plain water, and then dab petroleum jelly around the eyes to protect them while you tackle the rest of that reeky body. Use a peroxide and baking soda mixture. Combine one quart of 3% hydrogen peroxide with one quarter cup baking soda and one to two teaspoons of liquid soap, shampoo, or dish detergent. Lather this mixture into your dog's coat, let it sit for five minutes, and then rinse well with water. If only beating the traffic were this easy. That's it for this episode, the first one of season two. Thanks so much for listening. 
please subscribe to the Cottage Life podcast for free wherever you get your podcast. We'll have new episodes every Thursday throughout the summer, just in time for your drive up to the cottage. This episode is sponsored by our Cottage Life paid subscribers. I want to thank them for making this podcast series possible. For new listeners tuning in today, I invite you to check out our free email newsletters. Visit cottagelife.com slash newsletter to sign up. We'd love to hear from you. Post a review or email us at edit at cottagelife.com. To find out more about our magazine, our television shows, and our live events, visit cottagelife.com. This podcast is produced by Catherine Jun and me, Michelle Kelly. I'll see you on the dock.